Hi and welcome back to That Office Guy. Today guys we're going to be diving down into the desktop to take a look at how you can get an API key using Power Automate. This was uh, any time you require um, to use OAuth 2.0 or anything like that, this particular trick is going to get you your API key. So guys, as we get into this, if you find it useful, informative, um, you know, then go ahead and hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you're new, subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications and you will be kept up to date with all the hints and tips that we have here at that office guy right let's um let's jump on down into the desktop and take a look at how to do this um, and how to get your api keys okay guys so we're going to start off with power automate so this is all specifically about oauth2 with uh, power bi not really um supporting that particular connection type you'd have to build a complete custom connector in order to be able to um you know get access to uh, your api via that method so and um, what i'm going to show you is a way that you can retrieve your um your api key using power automate um, it will require uh, a pro license though so just bear that in mind there is a free trial and um, that will be able to to do this but uh, for now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to my flow some of this is going to have to be blurred out for privacy reasons but basically i have one example here um, and i'm going to click on edit on this one right so um, in basically it's a three-part series here and it's actually really straightforward but you could of course make this really complicated you could obviously utilize this key however you see fit um, all i'm doing in this example is actually emailing the key over to myself um, um, but feel free to obviously be able to to do this uh, separately and do something with the key if you wish okay um, but basically every single day um, I actually run an occurrence that runs every single day at 9 p.m. Uh, 9 a.m. Now it depends on the refresh rate of your key um, sometimes a key is required to be refreshed uh, a little bit more frequently um, sometimes it's 24 hours sometimes it's every seven days whatever right um, this particular reoccurrence allows me to do this every single day so this particular key is going to get refreshed every single day um, then we obviously have to use the HTTP call um, now this particular action is the premium function so um, you are going to need to uh, basically have a pro license of, of some kind um, now you can of course get a 90-day trial so you can test it all out make sure your entire flows work your your workflow you know from from power automate into power bi or whatever and make sure all that is working and um, before potentially you know upgrading to a pro license with power automate and um, obviously lots of great functions do become unlocked once you do get that um pro license but just to be bear in mind that um this particular function the http is going to require you to have a pro license. And um, so as we expand into this, this is really straightforward, right? And um, there's the method in which we are going to kind of call. Um, so for me personally, this is post, but it might be get, it might be whatever. Um, and again, you could run multiple APIs this way. And also it's also to note, this is using um, curl, okay? So um, rather than you know Java or whatever, you know, this is a, a curl uh, expression, if you will, that will basically allow us to connect to the API. So um, I'm doing a post, and then we have the URI um, for um, the actual you know uh, API token itself. Um, so we populate that just inside here. Um, and again, you would include HTTPS, you know, slash slash API dot whatever, right? Um, and then you basically include your headers, right? So here we have headers for accept and plain text, uh, the context type, uh, as you can see here. Um, and then obviously, if there was uh, any additional ones, you can continue to add them in. Uh, we obviously have in the body. So if this is a, an OAuth2, you'd put your username, um, what that would equal, um, the and password and then the password um, and then basically you've got some advanced options down here as well but uh, you know authentication um, and again i've actually left this as none it's not really required i'd get mine to work without but obviously do mess around with that if you need to um, if you wanted to go ahead and put basic on but i think uh, if you include it in the body there you should be good to go um, and then basically this is going to spit out your key okay and um, from here i actually then just email the key in the body of the email and then i can run another flow on that for example so and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back a step now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into, as you can see, all these ones that are running successfully. I'm just going to go click into one here um, so you can see that how this all runs out. And then I'm going to click into the body of this email. Um, and again, here you can see the, the output of the key at the bottom. Um, and again, if we come over to HTTP, uh, again, you can come down and you can see right at the bottom here is the body of the output, um, which is your API key or your token key. So um, fantastic way to basically quick and easy 
get hold of a token key specifically if it refreshes over a period of time and you're trying to um use power bi to connect to an api but obviously power bi doesn't have that oauth 2.0 um, and if you want to be a little bit more secure about things you know you can make this as complicated as you need and um, but for the most part um this gets you around having to create a custom connector for power bi which of course would be the better way to go however um, and I will kind of just articulate this now for you guys because there is a big pitfall with creating a custom connector for Power BI um, and that is the fact that it's not going to work in the Power BI service online it's only going to work from the desktop this basically means that you're going to have to have a machine that is constantly running uh, locally with your Power BI desktop or of course constantly refreshing that Power BI desktop and um, to bring in your new data which it might work for you that might be a, a solution for you guys however I prefer to do things completely autonomously and make sure that I have my processes set up and run in the cloud so I don't have to worry about being in a very specific location making sure that I hit a very specific button every single day and all that kind of good stuff so this is a great way and um, to get hold of that API token key um, before um, going down other rabbit holes such as such as creating custom connectors but again once you've got that key you can utilize it you can do something with it um, in further api calls and all of that kind of good stuff and um, so there's a lot of things you can do inside power automate that makes this super simple um, and this one here is a great way to get the token and then you can do something with the token it might be that you actually go ahead and do another api call utilizing uh, that token and then obviously get your data into power automate and then maybe you're from power automate you're adding that into a power bi data set you never know the possibilities are endless guys i'm going to leave the video there if you found it useful and informative hit the like button i do appreciate that if you are new to the channel go subscribing tap the bell select all notifications and you won't miss another hint or tip with all that said done and out of the way i hope everyone has a fantastic day and i'll catch you all in the next one